Hello, Internet. Welcome back to Cover Slaves, the game show where we play Warhammer 40k. Yeah, it's super depressing. Um, one day we'll play 30k, we'll probably be better. Jason is with me, Anubis. Hey, what's up? Jason plays Tau, so he's a huge douchebag. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I play Marines, thus White Scar, so oh. I'm equally a douchebag. Right, yeah. Uh, we'll be doing 2,000 points today. Uh, I've got Forge World stuff. I have as well. Uh, I knew you would, cheater. Mm -hmm. um, it's only okay if I do it. Oh, right. <laughs> I was going to do Loth, but I just didn't feel like painting. Uh, just thinking about 40k is kind of depressing. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been there. I've been there, man. Uh, I, last time we compared to visit your ex-wife, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think we'll, we'll get our second win with 40k, uh, as long as they don't turn it into Age Sigmar. And without any further ado, we can move on to our game. We'll be back with our armies and terrain and stuff. Okay, so here is my 2,000 point Tau Empire list. Uh, one FOC, no allies or anything like that. So I'll start with my Warlord and his trait. So he has a strategic genius. Uh, he, so he's in the, uh, the big battle suit. He's got the, the, the Strength 10 Fist. He's got a Fusion Blaster Shield. Some other goodies. Second in command here, he's rocking two Plasma Rifles. Uh, target Lock and Shield. He's also got that crazy chip that gives us tank under the squad. Uh, we got two identical crew units. They are ten men with five hounds each. And we've got over here, so I'm going to start over here. So we've got a uh, crisis team with interceptor and missile pods, twin linked. We got three broadsides, pod sides, whatever you want to call them. They have interceptor. We got uh, ten fire warriors with carbines and EMP and a devilfish. Devilfish has uh, disruption pod. Uh, Barracuda, Forge World Barracuda with Disruption Pod, uh, stock otherwise. We have two stock Tetras, Long Strike in his uh, Hammerhead uh, with all the fixings. We got another Hammerhead with, uh, I think it's got Night Vision and uh, it's got an Ion Cannon and Smart Missiles. And then we got two identical Riptides. They're rocking the uh, Ion Accelerators, uh, Interceptor, and they have... I believe I gave them a fellow pain, but I'm going to have to check. If not, they have the uh, BS2 Overwatch. That is my army. Alright, so this is my 2,000 point count as White Scar's list. Front here we have my Warlord, whose Warlord trait is Tenacity. He has Artificer Armor, he's on a bike. Storm Shield, Power Fist, uh, various other things. I believe he's got like uh, Melt the Bomb, stuff like that. Second in command is my Librarian in Terminator Armor, who has a Storm Shield, Power Axe, and stuff. His powers were, uh, of course, uh, on the Divination Tree, so he has Divination, and then he also has uh, Forewarning and Foreboding. So one of those is good. Yay. Uh, this guy is my Thunder Fire. Behind them, I've got uh, two of my troop choices, which are in Razorbacks, just combat squads with plasma guns, and the Razorbacks have uh, Last Plas. In the center there, troop choice is uh, bikes because of the commander there. They've got two plasma, attack bike with multi melta, sergeant's got uh, melted bombs, power axe. Dev sense in a free floating pod. Uh, they're, you know, kitted the usual way for cynicism. Uh, and then we've got a, a drop pod with them with the uh, missile launcher there, the waste of points. <laughs> then we have a Storm Talon uh, gunship with its newly much cheaper Typhoon missile uh, loadout. Uh, Got two Dreadnoughts, one of them went over here is an Ironclad uh, with Heavy Flamer multi melta and uh, Seismic Hammer. Other guys just normal Dread with multi melta and Heavy Flamer inside his fist. They're both in normal pods. And then over here we have a Dimos Pattern Vindicator uh, Tank Destroyer. And I've given him the Forge World Legacy of Glory um, uh, War of Murder, which is pretty cool. So that makes him uh, have tank hunt or, uh, Monster Hunter and everyone within six inches of him is fearless. So yeah, 2,000 points of White Scar's bullshit. Big five first. Three, two, one. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to talk about terrain. Uh, a lot of people play terrain as a very abstract, shitty sort of magic blob of cover. We have uh, sanity, a little bit of dignity, self-respect, so we actually use terrain rules. Uh, why don't we start right down over here. This big as ruin is a ruin. However, you can't really melt through the walls. So you can't move up through here because, you know, physics. You'd actually have to go around to where it's low enough to climb. Uh, I'll cover 
that are ruins like this guy over here, and this guy back here. Four plus save. Pretty much most of the board is going to be ruins, at least in the big buildings. Uh, as we move on down, got another ruin over here. Same shit. Uh, if you're under a floor, for example, barrage can't hit you, can't target you. So actual rules. This refinery is a little interesting because it's sort of a mixture of pure impassable, which would be this guy here, and a ruin, which is semi-impassable, depending. Uh, but again, four plus cover, make it simple. We have a giant river on the board. Now, last time in our Dread Mob Battle Report, I really stupidly made that dangerous. I think we're just going to make it difficult this time. Vehicles will still obviously treat it as dangerous, but you won't get, you know, dudes just dying. Um, bunker over here is just impassable. It's going to give a 4 plus cover save, but there's no going inside, there's no occupying it. Uh, we have some wrecks on the board, realistically we only have one wreck currently, which is that guy in the river over there. Uh, wrecks we play as destructible, so you, any, any army can target them, uh, they're the normal armor they always are. Glance in a pen just cause an explosion automatically, there's no chart. Uh, what else can I cover? We got some, some statues on the board, they are not magic, they don't help Imperials, they're just straight up impassable terrain to give a 4 plus cover save. And then we have, last but not least, some low cover on the boards. You're seeing these sandbags everywhere. You're seeing these conglomerations of, like, boxes and, of course, some oil drums. All of that shit is 100% destructible, and all of that gives a 5 plus cover save. Very simple. If, say, Jason's Riptide were to want to move onto this, he doesn't take it dangerous. He just removes the terrain. Boom. Knocks it out of his way, kicks it out there with his powerful legs. If a vehicle wanted to move through there, like a tank or something, very simple, you move into contact, you take your dangerous, if you pass it, you remove the piece of train obstructing your movement, bingo, done. You can ram through as many as you want in your movement. And that would include even moving in the shooting phase. I think that pretty much covers everything. We were considering doing this guy here as, uh, as destructible, but it's so critical in blocking line of sight in a lot of ways, we thought it'd be too easy to destroy it because it'd obviously be like armor 10. So we're just gonna leave it as an impassable piece of terrain. And uh, that pretty much covers everything. We have three objectives on the board today. We have one right here. We have one way down the river next to this bunker. And last but not least, we have one over here near this statue complex. So, oh, that reminds me of one more thing. We do have some tank traps on the board. Pure impassable. Can't be on them for anything. Can't be in them for anything. Can't move through them with anything. You just cannot be on that thing. Okay, so this is the Tau deployment. Uh, I'm gonna go left, left to right from for me. Okay, so we've got a Tetra here. Uh, the first Riptide is here with the commander, kind of just chilling near the bridge. We've got a tank here uh, with the ion cannon. Uh, we've got the broadside sort of deployed behind cover a little bit here with the devilfish. We've got long strike uh, in the the railgun hammerhead back there, sort of trying to be not quite up near the front. And we've got another, the other Riptide over here. So that's it for my deployment. We'll go on to reserves now. Okay, so first off, we have these two units of crude here, both identical, and they're both outflanking. The unit of crisis suits back here with the commander is deep striking. And then finally, we have the Barracuda, which is in reserve, normal reserve. So, oh, Space Marine, aka White Sky deployment. Uh, as you can see, we're doing corners. So I've got up in this building uh, three Devastator Centurions, and the Libby is with them, who's in terminal armor. Down below them, I've got uh, Razorback Last Plaza that is empty. Right here, I've got my Dimos Pattern Vindicator Tank Destroyer. Next to it is a Razorback, uh, same as that one with five men inside. Behind that is a Landspeeder Storm with five scouts. And then right here, I have my Thunderfire Kennel, and he has reinforced this ruin to have a better cover save. So yeah, that's my corner deployment for Marines. Let's talk about reserves. So for my Marine reserves, Got a five-man combat squad in my floating pod there. I've got my Capitan with the bike unit. They'll be coming on normal reserves. Storm Talon, normal reserves. And then I've got my two Dreadnoughts in uh, drop pods. Okay, so I have elected to go first since I set up first. So Crabblesworth here is going to try and steal the initiative. We're going to do it live on camera. So here we go. Give it your best shot, buddy. Gods of war! May your <laughs> hammer be mighty. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> nobody, and I mean nobody, expects the Inquisition. The well done. The smelly fish people. Well done, sir. So, it is the end of Death Watch, a.k.a. Space Marines, a.k.a. White Scars. Turn one! And because I stole the initiative, 
I had a pretty good first turn. So starting over here. He, being the speeder, jumbled around to fake Jay out and then finally moved back towards the objective. My Vindicator, Dymos Pattern, Tank Destroyer, uh, fired all the way over here, causing two wounds on Jason's ripped hot. Um, Razorbacks kind of finagled around in some maneuvering. This one that's carrying the squad took a pot shot at Jason's Riptide there, but uh, I was unsuccessful. I attempted to cast Divination on my Dev Centurions, but failed. But I did cast Four Warnings, so they have a 4 plus in Bull Save or some shit like that. My Thunderfire, located here, fired over here onto one of Jason's broadside. Uh, scoring four hits on the unit, and Jay failed, I believe, two saves, killing the one broadside, which I've named Toby. Uh, that's pretty much it for this quadrant of the battlefield. So moving on to the reserves that came in first one, because, you know, drop pod bullshit. So Ma, uh, Ironclad, got out and uh, flamed and melted Jason's Tetra, causing a hell point and making him jink. My other drop pod here disgorged five Marines with a plasma gun. Jay, using his neuroweb system jammer, made them get hot, but I made my armor saves, uh, and then I did actually cause that Tetra to die from the combined fire bolters. So that would be first blood right there. So overall, I would say the turn is going well. However, Jason does have Croots that could come in on the flank, as well as several other scary things. So we'll see you at the end of Tau Turn 1. This is the end of Tau Turn 1. Uh, let's, let's turn over here. So uh, this Riptide here, he uh, he actually moved back and took some shots at the Marines that were that disgorged from this drop pod. Uh, he missed all the shots, but whatever, you know, that's how it goes. Um, moving back here, long strike, fired a shot, which inflicted a hull point on this uh, vehicle here. We've got uh, the broadsides, which fired upon the uh, again the space marines here, causing them to fall back. Uh, we've got the hammerhead here, which fired his smart missiles over this building. In fact, I think that's what did that. Hull point. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I might have even forgotten to fire my stream. Uh, we've got the uh, devilfish, which moved up here. Uh, moved across the, the river here, didn't really do much. Discords its, its drones over here. Uh, we've got uh, the riptide here, which moved up. It fired into the Devastator Centurions, doing nothing. And we've got the commander here, who fired his fusion blaster at the Dreadnought, causing it to lose a hull point and be shaken. And, uh, that is... Oh, and we've got this Tetra here, which moved up. And that is the end of turn. Tau turn 1, so we'll see you at the end of Marine turn 2. This is the end of Space Marine, aka Death Watch, aka White Scars, turn 2. Starting with my reserves. Moving over here. My splendid and lovely Storm Talon came in here, did a uh, bit of a jink from Intercept, and uh, helped here, but didn't actually do anything there, just you know, kept him jinking. The other pod came in, it didn't scatter because of a locator beacon located inside of that pod, and that Dreadnought just lodged, firing at Jason's commander, and his shield stopped it. Moving down here, we have my Ironclad Dreadnought, who uh, was snap firing, uh, didn't really help out too much, moved an inch. These guys regrouped and just kind of chilled. I forgot to move them. Moving down. Dev Centurions managed to get Divination uh, cast on them by the Librarian, so they fired their twin like stuff, splitting fire. First two fired at that Riptide, made his saves. Third one actually split fired, managed to see just the end of this guy and took him out, so now both Tetras are down, thankfully. <laughs> um, my Dymos Pattern Vindicator over here fired. This guy doing, I believe, one more wound. She's got two left now. Good. Um, my storm uh, dislodges dudes over here, then moved a little bit just to keep that 12 inch diameter and, uh, deep, strike, uh, deep striking prevention. Uh, also got out from here with these guys, moved them random, they didn't have any shoot at. So two units here just kind of waiting for the eventual crute outflanking. Uh, these guys took pot shots at Jason's Riptide across the river there, but didn't really do much. Uh, last but certainly not least, my Thunderfire fired all the way over at Jason's broadside, but it scattered, hitting his uh, 
Hammerhead. I uh, did three hits on the guy, but uh, didn't get through the 12 armor on the sides. So overall, an okay turn. Not terrible. Uh, I still have some uh, reserves to come in, so we'll see you at the end of Tau Turn 2. This is the end of Tau Turn 2. Uh, we'll start with my reserves that came in over here, here. So we have the two squads of Kroot that outflanked. Uh, using their uh, Kroot senses, as I call it, they re-rolled their outflank dice and got uh, the side I would like. Uh, they inflicted some damage on the scouts, and the other squad eliminated their scout vehicle. Moving back here, we have a unit of crisis suits with the uh, the uh, lieutenant, I guess, who deep struck. Uh, they actually deep struck here, but went 11 inches back, still managed to stay alive, stay alive, so that was cool. They fired their missiles, and I believe they took out this vehicle here with uh, the glancing hits. Uh, the Devilfish drones have scooted over here. They actually rolled 12 for their thrust, so that was cool. The Devilfish itself moved up into this building and disgorged its troops. It's kind of hard to see, but they're in there. They ran into firing positions, not really doing any damage right now. Uh, the This Riptide here jumped up on this uh, bunker and fired. He slung his blast, I believe, into the, yes, the Marines over here, killing four, which was pretty cool. Uh, this ion cannon hammerhead fired his blast over here, but it scattered. And I believe it didn't do anything, or it might have caused a wound. I'm not sure, but the smart missiles uh, killed, I think, one. Um, but the uh, broadsides finished off the last of those drop pod marines with their smart missiles. So that was cool. Uh, railgun from Long Strike fired, uh, destroying blast cannon on this vehicle. I'm causing another hull point. Commander fired, shaking this dreadnought, causing it to be unable to move or shoot. Or sorry, it can only snap fire, but it cannot move. Uh, the Riptide here, he slung a blast over here as well. He, I believe, took out the vehicle and just killed one more uh, scout. So that was pretty interesting. And then going back here, the Barracuda, with just its burst cannons, shot down the Storm Talon. So that was pretty exciting. So that was pretty much it, the highlights for my turn. So we'll see you at the end of Space Marine Turn 3. The end of Space Marines, aka Death Watch, aka White Scars, Turn 3. Uh, lots of my reserves came in over here, the bikes. Uh, because Tower kind of gay, they got. Overwatched or intercepted or whatever, so that's what remains. And they didn't do anything because I'd have to jink in my own turn before shooting in my own turn to do anything, so. Yeah! Let's complain about dropouts more. Over here! Um, I did actually have some successes. I, I took out one of the crew units, so that was cool. Uh, my one remaining scout and my one remaining tactical squad guy is there. Uh, these guys were twin linked, thank you, the librarian, and they fired their crack missiles and grab guns down there. Causing many, many deaths, but they did not run. Uh, I did fire my tunic plasma gun, uh, blowing up my own vehicle with uh, overheat, so that was great. Moving on down here, my thunder fire, I forgot to fire it because I'm an idiot. Uh, over on this side of the things, my dreadnought that had to snap fire and couldn't move fired and surprisingly didn't hit anything. My ironclad moved up six, fired its melted gun at. Uh, Jay's commander didn't do anything and then failed its charge. So yeah, uh, that is the end of Marine turn three. We'll see you at the end of Tau turn three. This is the end of Tau turn three. So we're gonna start right here. So we've got some crew, uh, the crew that are left from this attack. Uh, they sort of just moved in. Uh, they were being attacked by various space marines and scouts, but they were all eliminated by various Tau shooting. Um, so they're just sort of hunkering on the objective there, with drones as support. Moving along, the Barracuda sped across the table and destroyed, eliminated the last scout hiding behind that statue. Um, moving over here, the Fire Warriors took up firing positions in the building and fired down at the Thunderfire Cannon, inflicting one wound. Uh, the Devilfish just sort of moved up to a different position. Okay, these crisis suits over here jumped across the river. One of them suffered a, a wound from uh, dangerous terrain from doing so. 
the riptide that was previously on this building has now moved, fired, and taken up position behind this building. Moving over here, the two tanks. Uh, let's start with long strike. Long strike fired at this uh, dreadnought, ironclad dreadnought, and inflicted one glancing hit. This uh, vehicle fired on the bikes, killing one, I believe, with its ion cannon. Possibly two, I can't remember. Um, the broadsides, they fired on this guy here, and they glanced him to death. The commander fired, but missed with his fusion blaster. And finally, the riptide, with one wound left, uh, fired his smart missiles, because he couldn't fire his ion cannon because of interceptor last turn. So for now he's just uh, you know jumping up there and looking cool and looking like a boss. So that's it for my turn. We'll see you at the end of Space Marine Turn 4. End of Space Marines, aka Death Watch, aka White Scars, turn four. Starting over here. My librarian climbed down out of this ruin. He also buffed them with prescience. And then uh, ran here to hang out and be cool. My Thunderfire shot and uh, killed the six remaining crew that were there, so good. Um, my Dev Centurions fired everything they had at Jason's Barracuda, but uh, no luck there. And of course, there's a two plus jink because awesome. Moving on down. The bikes that were here, uh, the, the commander split off, triple busted all the way up to there to get in their face. The uh, Ironclad you're seeing there charged and killed Jason's commander and then consolidated five inches. Moving down over here, my other two bikes are coming around the bend, turbo boosting, hoping to get to the objective because they are troop choices. So yeah, um, might still have a sliver of hope. We'll see you at the end of Tau Turn 4. This is the end of Tau Turn 4. Uh, going along with what I've been doing before, we'll start over here. So the Barracuda zoomed over. Spun his burst cannons around backwards and fired some shots at the library and didn't kill him. Uh, the gun drones, however, I believe got his last wound. No, it was the Riptide. That's right. The gun drones fired as well, but the Riptide is the one that finished off that last wound. The Devilfish sped forward from the building and used a flat out move to get over to that objective. Uh, over here, the Fire Warriors continued firing onto the uh, Thunderfire Cannon but didn't score any wounds. Moving over here to the crisis team that's sort of been on the river. They've taken some wounds from jumping around on the river, but they, uh, with the commander, fired. I don't think they did anything, but they fired at the uh, the enemy captain or chapter master. Uh, so combined fire from them, the hammerhead, and I believe that I think it was just those two units actually. They ended up killing him, taking his last wounds. Uh, the broadsides here scored some lucky hits. They stayed their ground and just stayed put and fired point blank at this guy. Managed to get the last hull point with a glance. Uh, the Riptide is just chilling up here. He fired at the commander as well. I believe he did a wound. Or um, Again, I spy fire so many things, sometimes I forget. Um, on to the other... What is that? What else is left? I think that's it, really. Uh, so, f at the end of this turn... Uh, Crab ended up tapping out just because of time constraints and, you know, it's not looking so hot. So the score at the end of the game, uh, what it looks like to be, it looks like we got one objective here held by Tau, two, and I believe one held by Drop Pods. So that's two objectives to one, uh, with first blood for the Space Room player, giving him a score of... I got my Warlord dinner. Five with Warlord. And for myself, I believe six. So in the end, kind you of. Killed my warlord. I did. Oh, I did. So seven, seven. So a little closer than we were expecting, but it was, you know, tower stupid. So what can we do, right? So we'll see you at the post game show. Welcome to the post game show. I am always as Crabblesworth, and this is Anubis. So, or we'll move the chair. How was the game for you, Jay? Well, it was like a quiver in your voice. <laughs> it was pretty good. Uh, I, mean, I can't complain, although I did. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it went really well. Uh, I had some decent dice rolling. You had, I think, one turn of bad luck that kind of hurt there. Eh. You didn't really come There was a lot of dice either way. 
But yeah. Um, a Dreadnought has one shot, dude. Yeah. What are you gonna put in the realm of bad luck? Yeah. So you can tell you're gonna hit or it won't. Ah, what was your MVP? I was thinking about this. Uh, hard to say. Um, maybe the commander in just that. He kept the dreadnoughts busy. He eventually died to one of them. He did, but for the time when I needed them occupied. What was your epic fail? The commander dying to the dreadnought? <laughs> I don't know. You can't do it. You can't be, <laughs> you can't be a BB and epic fail. It's against the... Uh, because I had that, that three unit overwatch. That's immoral. Ready, that's, right? not, that's not okay. Fair enough. Um, it's harassment. You can't say that. See, it's bad when I can't figure that out. You know that your army is a little silly. <laughs> when you can't remember. You don't know what was bad. Yeah. Um... The crisis team with the missile pods did okay. I just feel like maybe I sunk too many points into that commander and they deep struck like like they scattered twelve inches. Well, at least they didn't miss You know what? You know what? It's the Tetris. Yes, yeah. Yeah, they didn't even get a shot off the No, they literally did not marker light anything. I'm not gonna say I'm not proud of that because I'm proud of that. That's not really a fail in that it's a success on your hand. I don't know what No, it's a failure. They absolutely yeah, failed. Sure. They failed their, their job. Uh, one of them died for even doing anything, so yeah. they didn't even make the move. So. so there you go. Yeah. Okay, so MVP, Commander, Epic Fail, Tetris. What about you? MVP? It's very difficult to determine. It's kind of <laughs> difficult, right? Like, uh, you know, games like this, it's like... I'll just give it to the, the uh, Ironclad. Its only contribution to the entirety of the game is sucking up shots for the entirety of the game, punching your commander in the face, and dying to broadsides, so... Yeah, why not? Sure. Why okay. not? Got me, Warlord. Except for um, Epic fail would be my bike squad. Yeah, I And agree. that's really my fault as their commander for putting them in reserve. I don't know why I did that. Well, you wanted to react and come off the table edge. Yeah, and but I should be acting. I shouldn't be reacting. Should be you reacting to me. Especially after my epic stealing of the initiative. <laughs> uh, no, I fucked up with those guys. They're definitely my epic fail because it just, it's too many points in reserve. It'd be one thing if it was just the bike squad, but I had the fucking 102, 190 point captain or the fuck he was in there. Yeah. With him. So that's a lot of points in reserve. Anywhere, that's like a 400 shot. point you know, unit reserve and fuck it. The fact that they can't even assault afterwards. It was done to be like hedging my bets, but realistically, my list was supposed to be on the move. Oh, that, well, that's what I mean. Like that crisis team, it didn't look like much, but that was almost 350 points. Well, that's some decent shit. You know? Oh, no, it's, it was okay. But it's just like those HQs, it's like once you fill your minimum in, it's like, do I really need this super character? Like you could get a whole other stuff. Like, yeah. How many more bikes could you have gotten from that commander? Uh, the bike used about 200. Um, uh, I don't know. There was a good, decent game. Um, the fact that it was three objectives fairly spread out as well meant it was going to be a very tight game. Yes. Uh, if there was more objectives, it'd be a little more spread out, obviously. Yes. But yeah, the objective placement was very interesting. Uh, I will say I do love the new method where you put objectives down before randomizing your deployment. I think that's Not so brilliant. much new as it is brought back from a time when it worked. But it does, uh, but, it does yeah. reduce the cynicism. Also, when we set up boards, we're doing it knowing it could be any any deployment yeah. type. So you kind of wanted to work for any deployment We type. set this board up three days before we made armies, so there's that. that. Yeah. Um, hmm. Two minutes or less thoughts on the game. Uh, Closing thoughts on the game. Okay. I, I think I played it pretty well in that I just sort of set up in the corner. And, you know, it, it was a lot of it was we had this kind of shooting gallery going on here, and you were sort of relegated to that corner. So anything that came out was just stuff I could piecemeal. I I feel like, I don't know if I really would have done much differently. I maybe would have gotten my Riptide up there sooner, because like, I realized that that's kind of a hilarious spot to put him. Um, obviously, position. remember to do your interceptors. Tau players out yeah. there, remember to do it. Otherwise, you know, you'll get sour and mad at yourself for no reason. 
I'm sure they're not going to remind you. <laughs> <laughs> no, and nor should you. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Remember to do stuff. Uh, that's probably the thing I'm going to take away from this game the most. <laughs> what about you? Two minutes or less. Thoughts um, on the game? Good. I made some really big critical errors. Number one, of course, putting the bikes in reserve. Number two, I should have just thrown the dev sense at you, killed like one. I was one, really afraid of oh, you striking them. I, I mean, I could have put them in the pod. Um, super cynical, obvious thing. But again, uh, nothing to tank with. So you would yeah. have run through with them very quickly. They would have ate a riptide and then yeah. died, probably. Yeah, and even then, it's it's like. Maybe. Is yeah. it worth throwing. 325 odd points to like take out 190 or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, actually, it's 190, you know. Right, so it's sort of like, uh, I'd rather just chill up top and 195. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, again, I think the problem, not the problem, but if there, had, if there had been two objectives that they were covering, it would have helped more. They were only really helping with one. It's true. And of course, crew could be probably the best thing to throw at them because I'm wounding you on sixes. Hey, so why do you think I threw 20 of them over there? Yeah. Very good idea. And then that's also them shooting up. They did surprisingly Fries. okay for feeding them right into your teeth. They I mean, did. they died, but... I'm impressed that I managed to take out like 40 plus crit. <laughs> I did not think that was going to happen, so... It was 30. It was 30? Okay, 30. Yeah. yeah. It was still a lot. 30 on the nose. Like, including the A lot of crit. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, a good game. I... I I need to make a better list um, in so much as, like, I didn't need a 200 point captain on a bike just to get a true bike squad. Like, I didn't really use them. So. No, they could have been in your list as no. fast, right? Or and, did you have all your slots filled up? Uh, it wouldn't have mattered really either way. Like, like, I had two, two fasts, I think, taken, so it doesn't just really take matter. And, and then. Well, I'm not going to say no to troops if I have the cannon. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, all, all I'm saying is I don't need two HQs. No one needs two HQs, so... Even though I felt a little clunky with... I could have had a whole other squad of... For the 135 that I spent in the librarian, it would have been 165 for like someone like Tiggy. I barely used the fucking traits for White Scars, so as nice as it is to have hit and run dreadnoughts, it's really not like a Tau thing. It's more like units that fight combat. So, yeah. like, maybe if I really want to get away from a riptide combat, but. Or uh, catapult off of a combat you're already doing into another. Oh, one. sure, oh, sure. It's, know, super, yeah. it's super useful. It's just. It's situational. I should be doing ultramarines. I should be trying to shoot a shooty army, not assault it. That's only underlined by fucking Overwatch and then, of course, uh, Interceptor. So, really, I should just shoot you to death because you're going to shoot me to death. Yeah, and it, it does work. There's a lot of scary shooting up there that I'm afraid of. I'm going to move away, I think, from the Definitely. Razorbacks because they're not terrible, but they're still very easy to kill. Are you going to do no, like you're going to have guys on foot? Or no, no, or I'll probably do more Rhinos and see how that goes. Just and try to try the 10 man, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the Razorback is nice. It's just you're. What, you're, you're, you're giving I'm torn up, between moving and shooting. Yeah, it's and always, you're giving it's up, always an annoying choice. You're giving up half your squad, right? For those guns, essentially. The well, price isn't the problem. I mean, it's 70 points. For no, four, I'm not even talking about price. I'm talking about transport capacity over what you're getting, right? You're getting those, the, that it's more. It's cannon. more that I'm constantly torn between getting a unit somewhere and hopping out and shooting. Yeah. And if it was a rhino, I don't think I'd sweat not firing. <laughs> it's like the devil fish. His job is to move. Yeah. And shit up fire warriors. Oh, um, I think it's time for our usual total non sequitur shifting away from the game we just played to shit on 40k. Shit on 40k. Shit on 40k. My K. favorite time. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll drink to that. MCs are too good. Vehicles are shit in comparison to MCs. There's plenty of fine vehicles. And what we mean by that is just explaining that, like, when you, you can destroy a vehicle by just wounding it, but you can also. Blow off its weapons, slow it down. Yeah, it feels like every time I run a dreadnought, I reminded very quickly why I don't like them because it's sort of like, well, it didn't die, it just can't move, which may as well be a death sentence. What if you, <laughs> what if you could shake riptides or stun them? Yeah, that's really where I'm coming from is the fact that you had one riptide in the game that survived the whole game with like fucking one wound left. He had one wound like, left. He's he's jumping up on things. He's he's making you know he's baking sure. a pie. It's all sorts of fucking madness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So MCs need to either get worse or, or walkers need to get better. Vehicles especially. Right. 
I actually, I don't mind hull points, but I'm starting to think that glancing hits probably shouldn't do anything. Really? Like... <laughs> well, you gotta do something. No. <laughs> the whole idea of a glancing hit in, like, World War II was that it fenced off, right? Like, oh no, we lost our uh, water. Like, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, literally, like, a, a hit that penetrated your armor was massive. Like, like oh shit, like, I not even a chance of blowing up. I suppose but a glancing hit just by its... Problem or premise. Yeah, like I, I would suppose that's like having a pinning weapon that if it doesn't wound, like it rolls one under the wound, that it still wounds but doesn't do the pinning. Like, yeah. I, you know I, I mean? think like, it should just be like like glancing equals, oh, okay, now you're, I don't know, it's not firing. It's just an automatic thing. Like, it's doesn't not damaging you, it's just slightly hindering you. I can see that. Because um, yeah. again, it's not hard to glance things to death anyway. Everyone's, who's taking, who's taking missile launchers? No one. Everyone's taking fucking auto cannons or going all the way to the last cannons, right? Like, million shots. Thing. Why not double my shots at seven, then, then fucking have one non AP2 shot at eight? Like. Yep, 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 yep. I agree. Uh, one thing I would like to see is much more definitive rules on what can go where. Like, there's no reason that a bike should be able to get up into a ruin. I, like. Well, yeah, that's. I mean. And, and it should say, like, you know, when the people say, oh, well, they deployed up there. Like, back when you when you did have those restrictions where it was like, you know, artillery can't go up in a building, but you put an artillery piece in there and say, oh, they deployed up there. They need to really talk about this stuff. It's just too loosey-goosey, and it they scares They pulled me. away because they don't want to have to mandate, like, custom-built terrain, and I don't envy them that. Yeah. But what they're certainly fucking uh, very much making themselves a target for is not telling people the gist Remember that great set of paragraphs from the fifth book where it was sort of like, you kind of want, you know, a bit of everything. You want some low cover. You want terrain that blocks yep. LOS. You want terrain yeah. that doesn't block LOS but provides cover to smaller units. You want low cover. But most importantly of all, you want big LOS blockers to break up the whole thing. Like, they kind of gave you this idea of all terrain is important in its various types. Yes. There's this new way of doing it where it's all just bubble fucking terrain. It's all area terrain. It's really fucking lazy. Mm -hmm. What point is something like this if just touching it gives you cover? Like, it's really dumb. <laughs> yeah, like, if my guy is behind here, he should get covered. But if you're also behind here, I shouldn't well, get covered. Like, it's pretty simple. It's it's so rare anyway that maneuvering helps you in terms of shooting. So, like, it's kind of nice for occasionally if you overrun their lines to actually... Well, now they're not in cover. I've overrun their lines and I'm shooting diagonally down their line. Mm -hmm. you know, like... Strategy. Strategy tactics. But of course, that's our long-winded thing. We like terrain rules. That's why we start every fucking segment with terrain rules. Yep. We just want to drill it home that if uh, if you're new to this and someone is not talking about terrain before you play a game, you want to stop them slowing down. And it's explain almost that. as important as the rules in your codex. I would agree. I would agree. Because there are plenty of units that I've used that would not be as good in a situation where the table's not correct you know, the like, joke of it now is is what's a jet bike to a bike if you can just go anywhere right and if i'm just supposed to measure in any axis oh 12 well i guess i'll just be light up that building it may as well be a what's the point bike. of jump infantry in an open field not much they're not really going to get anywhere they're just going to get shot up in an open field all you want is something that can oh, sit there shit. what's the point of jump infantry when i can just melt through solid walls yes you know, what what point is being able to do that if you can just basically do Isn't that, that the entire reason of their creation in the fluff i don't i mean Probably. Maybe that's just me, but, you know, getting over a large barricade, a large barrier. On the bigger picture, in the rumors front, I am kind of worried that they're going to AOS 40k, because... Cross, please don't. Please don't fucking do that. Um, I mean, there's the thought of it, you know, being their biggest IP and their biggest moneymaker, but at the same time, some of the more reliable rumor people are sort of saying that might be the way it's going. And then there's the ominous uh, preamble, of course, from their... Uh, their financial year where they, the head of the company is basically saying he's got to take a long, hard look at, uh, you know, their entire line and maybe do some trimming. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, no. but you're the ones who are going nuts over having releases every fucking day for the most innocuous shit. Maybe you could slow it down, not put out 800 new fucking products in two days instead of blaming us for that. <laughs> like yeah. And, like, fix some of the stuff that's already wrong. There's so yeah. many useless units, even in the good books, and that bothers there's, me. There's zero communication or public relations. If I was a fucking Yandin player, I'd like to know what's going on. If I buy a Swiss Army knife, I want everything on that Swiss Army knife to work. I don't want to have three, you know, rusty spoons and stuff. So, you know, there's so many, like, who, Eldar are great, but Warwalkers. When was the last time we saw Warwalkers? You know what I mean? Sure, like, yeah, yeah. 
it's just bizarre. I mean, they want to make money. Why not sell more kits? I I don't understand the whole. They're petrified of actually pretending they make games too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hit our four gig limit there, but we were talking about AOS and uh, it's been apparently met with wide acclaim, according to the head what, of GW. What does acclaim so, mean exactly? Is it a positive word? Or, Negative claim? Someone bought it. That must be why I claim. Um, I don't know. I, 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 like a ruse. <laughs> I, I think it's easy to make it like the beating stick, but it's a real problem that it doesn't have points. Like, there's a recent tournament at Cobalt's, and I'm sure people had fun, but when people are telling me about these lists, like... None like, of it sounds fun. What? <laughs> Like, and it sounds... Well, we had a wound cap limit, so like that's arbitrary and sort of matters, I guess. But what if they introduced like, you know, a trading card game every time you wanted to play chess? I, I don't understand. Like it's a totally different game now. Yep. You know, and I guess some people, you know, they can learn it and play it, but I... well, it's also done the stupid like there's no rules for terrain thing. So like oh, you're yeah. gonna have your your horses like galloping up up walls, buildings and walls, and what's that? Apparently, it's very easy to fire a bow into or out of a combat <laughs> while fighting. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. God yeah. forbid that's the solution for 8th edition 40k for all the people complaining about combat. We'll just make it all happen at the same so time. So, basically, you just get within proximity, which seems uh, like you start off win, and you have a large map, and you just sort of move towards each other, and you. Yeah, just... I think our game would have been better if we didn't have objectives and we'd all just move towards the center of the map until there was one side of the model. You know when you play fighting games and there's that one guy who just button mashes the whole game? It seems like everybody wants to do that or needs to do that for this new game AOS and it just doesn't seem right. I don't... Kings of War, baby. Kings of War. Kings of War. I have no interest in Kings of War, but I was never a fantasy player either, so... Fair enough. But I do shed tears for my fantasy homies. Uh, That's how bad it is. Pour the 40 out. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Games Workshop, you're still around for now, but you're not fooling anyone, you're not really making much more money, you're just kind of hiding and shaving off your costs. Uh, your sales are down. You can try and bullshit that all you want with, uh, well, the exchange rate of this and that, and the currency fluctuations, and our cash value, and whatever. No. You're not really handing out too many dividends in the future, I'm thinking, so... No, maybe have a sale or something. <laughs> uh, well, that was actually mentioned in the preamble. He was like, uh... Oh no, we're a premium product. We're not getting cheaper anytime soon. And like, oh okay, all right. Well, good luck with that premium product with four pages of rules. Good anyway, um, yep. let's hope that AOS doesn't come for forty k. And if it does, may God have mercy on all our souls. We'll make a lot of videos bitching. I'm sure. Oh yes. If the internet's for anything, it's uh, for complaining. You know it. And complaining about complaining, which is actually the entire purpose of the internet. You can't complain. That's <laughs> not good. Uh, well, thank you for watching. Internet. People. Uh, we should be having more battle reps soon. We're also going to be doing more 30k battle reps soonish. We'll see. Uh, we just have to force Jason into 30k first. <laughs> I'll get there. I'll get there. Just, just paint your marines as fish people. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. If I slink away like this, they will not move my pants. There we go. No one saw my wiener. <laughs>